We remember the day the stars answered. The day we learned we were not alone. When I was stationed on the Culverin, I wasn't sure what to expect. I had my doubts, of course, but I still had hope. That was until we were first issued a move and engage order from command. We were finally taking the fight to the alien threat. I remember wanting to vomit after the reality set in. After the first ship exploded, we were ordered to evacuate. I remember the distinct feeling of dread after the rest of the fleet exploded, but then... The rest of the pod erupted in deafening cheers. I looked out the window to see that the alien ship had begun to break apart with explosions rippling through its hull. That's when I knew it. We had a chance. Not just to survive, but to win. Hey guys, Stealth here. Quick note before the episode begins. As per your recommendations, I have watched the Perun guide on how to build your ships. But I've done that after I recorded the episode you're about to watch. So you're still going to see me make some bad decisions when it comes to ship designing. I will correct these in episode 11. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome back. It's Terra and Victor, episode 10. And I have had it with Poland. Yes, that's not something that you see every day. Here's my reasoning. I'm trying to get Poland back into the fold. The fold that is the Eurasian Union that keeps growing ever larger. Now, much to my dismay, the European Union has decided that they want Romania. So I started looking into the allies of Romania and that eventually also led me to looking into the allies of Poland. And I saw that, hey ho, Poland, not allied to the European Union. They have allies, they have Pakistan, they have the Benelux, they have the Alpine states, and they have Portugal. I'm sorry, but that's not really going to cut it, is it? I have a couple of armies amassed at their borders. I have two army groups here, I have one army group there. We're going to invade Poland and take it from them. I do have some support, it's not stellar, but at least I have... Well, I'm the second largest faction next to the Resistance, which holds absolutely no ground here. The currently controlling party is the Protectorate, which has 2% support, and it's going down. So, uh, we're going to make some war on Poland. I have already instructed Eri to start the process. She's going to influence the policy of the Eurasian Union. And we're going to go to war with Poland. Aside from this plan, I am also working on the rest of the destroyer group that I was already planning on building in the previous episode. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'm getting sabotaged more and more by Project Exodus. This is getting annoying. Because sometimes you do one of these missions and it just completely resets. Sometimes they just sabotage the shit out of your objectives. Um, I had fleet combatants at about 1500 research and then it got sabotaged. To the point where I lost all research and I had to start all over again. Thank you very much. And now they did it again. They sabotaged our Augment Combat Training, which is a combat pro oh, it's a combat program I had going. It's a big one. Uh, where is it? Here, it's 5,000 points. And I think I had it halfway there until something else came up that I really wanted. Anyway, let's get this war with Poland going. Here we are. Let's select a new policy for the Eurasian Union. Like declaring war on Poland. Why not? It means we're going to declare war on Poland and Pakistan. Well, look, I don't really care about Pakistan. I only care about Poland. I want to get Poland because it has quite a nice amount of hab control. It has a bit of boost. It's not that special. But hey, uh, I have a claim on this and I am going to make good on that claim. So now that we're at war, I can push all of our groups into the battle zone. Um, we are fighting with Atomic Age... War group or battle groups against information age groups. So I might have uh, a slightly harder time than I would like. But hey, it's what we got. It's what we got to work with. Meanwhile, we have uh, another assault in the Tehran region, which was successful. The aliens have been really busy. And I got a warning at some point saying, hey, um, if you don't lay low for a while, the aliens are going to make a direct attack against you. Or at least they were thinking about it. Which means that I decided to not go on any further missions, such as Assault Alien Asset. 
So I left it alone for a while and now look where that got us. The aliens have assets everywhere. It is largely South America, but they have also managed to get to Iraq. Usually when they get there, I strike because it's getting a bit too close. They're in uh, Brazil quite a bit, Bolivia, Yemen, uh, Chad, Argentina. They are really working hard to get more and more and more stuff done. Which I really do not like. Oh, by the way, this asshat was trying to sabotage one of my projects. He got arrested. Actually, Lewis, I have a different mission for you. You're going to assassinate this guy. He was trying to um, sabotage a project. I think he got a critical failure on his chance roll. And because of that, he is now my guest. One which is solidly behind bars. We're going to release him in five days. No, we'll release him a little earlier than that. To the point where he's going to be released dead. Gary, I want you to once again do a set national policy. Because we can start to integrate some other factions. Such as the... Lost sheep of, um, what was it, Slovakia and Romania. One of these, as I can see, is not defended. I'm here. It's entirely unacceptable. Yeah, Romania is not fully protected. Romania, get your ass in gear. Protecting Here we go. Our interests. Okay, and um, then we have Alex. Alex has been gaining some popular support over in Hungary, also in Slovakia. I'm trying to keep most of these countries well under control, and I'm also looking at the level of subversion that they have going on. Uh, of course, for Angola, it's really hot. <clears throat> Sorry, really high, which makes it quite difficult. But then again, I don't care for Angola. I've abandoned it quite a few times. Just nobody else wants it. So it just, like a, a stray cat, it just keeps coming back to me, even if I don't want it. As for the rest of the factions, so the rest of the countries, uh, we're doing good on unrest, so I don't need to focus on that too much. Let's see if I can inspire somebody, or I can just make this a bit more of a popular campaign in Poland, because who knows? Maybe some of these people in Poland want to get liberated. Or am I going a bit too Russian now? <laughs> you be the judge. Here we go. The first guard tank army has arrived. Begin occupation of the region. This is going to take a while. Uh, these things don't go very quickly, but the more firepower you pour in, the better it gets. The problem, however, is that they are, of course, fighting back, and a group that gets completely demolished dies. So, in this case, I'm going to have to pull back on some of these damaged groups if they get too damaged. You can get all the way down to 1%, and then you can leave. That is generally the best way to go about it before you completely lose the army. And at this rate, holy crap, they're dealing a lot of damage. Okay, we're going to do another campaign. New project. Fission, fission reactor array. Interesting. Tell me more. What's the fission reactor array? A sizable nuclear reactor capable of powering the HAB at any distance from the sun. It's a tier 2 module. Let me show you around on my space stations as they are now. Uh, back starting with the first one, Molly Base. It's been upgraded to an orbital core, which is a tier 2 station. That means, like the HABs on planets, I now have the additional module slots here. I'm filling some of them, not all of them. And, for example, um, Molly is currently working on addition of fission piles. But these generate 10 power each. If I could just replace one of them with one of those 40 power outputs, that'd be a lot better. A lot easier to maintain. Mission complete. Okay. Uh, Federation, we're going to include Romania. Thank you. Does that mean that the war... Oh. Ah, yes. Uh, another one of our USMC COG classes has been complete. Are you kidding? The 1st Panzer Division. The European 1st Panzer Division is coming back into Romania. I am not a fan. What I was going to say is I wonder... I wonder if the war with the EU has now stopped. It has not. And because I am... Uh, well, I'm now federated with them. But I wasn't at the time when the war broke out. So I'm kind of in a position where I'm a bit screwed. Because right now, I don't have the ability to really do much. I have positioned the 25th Motor Rifle Regiment here. 
and hopefully they can do something to stop the Europeans. But uh, I'm not particularly hopeful because my guys... Are you even fighting? No. Of course you're not fighting because I'm not at war with them. Oh boy, I am not at war with them. Now what I have seen is that it is really hard to take over a country. So hopefully Romania will hold. Because right now, short of declaring war on the European Union, there is not much that I can do. And I already have my hands full and the European Union has a ton of allies. So these factions are most likely all going to declare war if I decide to declare war in the European Union. Which would allow me to start actively fighting this first Panzer Division. It's not really something I want to do. Uh, what I could do is just pour some money into the issue. I've been pouring a lot of money into the modernization and it's going incredibly slowly. Modernizing an army takes a long, long time. What I can do is just build another army. I'm going to need five points into the build army system. So we're going to go with five points there. Confirm. The Eurasian unit has deployed the 5th Guards army in Kazan. Very good. Uh, they're not going to be available instantly. They're going to be available in the next round as I take control of this new group. A good while later, here we are. The Eurasian Union took control of Warsaw region from Poland. Poland will retain a claim on the region. The European armies have conquered Poland, but it may rise again. Uh, <laughs> no, don't worry about it. It's going to blend right into what I'm doing with the rest. Wow. Alexander Berger has been murdered by an unknown faction. We have identified Project Exodus. Sorry, by an unknown group. We have identified Project Exodus behind the operation. Wow, this is pretty bad. This is my influencer guy. This is the guy who had 20 persuasion stat. This is pretty eerie. This is bad. Okay, ah, uh, Poland. Tell me, Poland. We are going to immediately ally ourselves with China. Um, and we are... I believe we're immediately... Yeah, we're immediately part of the Eurasian Union. So, if you claim, or rather, if you have a claim on something, and then you proceed to make sure that you actually can conquer that particular territory, you instantly gain full control over it. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Uh, Poland doesn't quite see it that way, I suppose. And I do have one undefended control point, because Russia expanded into five control points. But aside from that, we have Poland. So... How big is the Eurasian Union? Well, the answer is yes. It is turning into a really big place. And what I can still add to it are these nations here. Slovakia, Hungary, Romania. Eventually, that'll go up. That number of nations that I can add to it. It's going to be the Great Nations Research. And with that, I'll be able to get that Greater Russia project. What I'm going to do now, however, is pull all of my research out of this and pour it into fleet combatants. Because it's, once again, been sabotaged by the enemy. And it's getting a bit tedious. Let's see, how are my ships doing? Um, I got two of my destroyers docked around Earth. The third, I believe, is still under construction. Yeah, 48 days. Perfect. Now, there has been some shifting of Habs. Some shifting of Habs. Especially, I think, around Earth. I saw that, what was it, Changong Station? One of the stations got taken over. Holy crap, look at the size of this thing. Tourville Station, Low Earth Orbit 2. It's a Tier 2 station. It has 85 personnel on board. It's costing a fuck ton of money, but it's generating research. Oh, it's It's got research labs all over the place. Materials lab... Xenology lab, marine barracks, okay. So um, if I want to try and assault this thing, I can. It's going to be difficult, however. Let's see, could I design a ship that serves as a troop transport, if you will? Design ship class. I want something that transports my marines. If I want to have a marine group, is that a utility module? Yes, Marine Assault Unit. 
I'm going to need a bigger ship. Frigates. Yeah, so you can put four of these on. Making this one massive troop ship. That could be what I need. Just auto-design the rest. And no, it's not a defense bomber at all. Um, <clears throat> I don't need this many propellant tanks. Give me half. And I probably don't need that many engines either. Give me three. The reason why I'm building one of these is what I, I'm going to try and assault one of these Habs that the other factions have. And at that point, I can either decide that I want to deorbit it, or I can take it and hold it for my own. Both are very interesting options. Now, this is not the Spatha, this is the uh, Gosrith class troop carrier. Sorry, troop frigate, <clears throat> I suppose. Save the design. Let's get to working on one of those. Because I am very interested to see how that's going to go down. So give me a Gosrith class frigate. And I cannot prioritize it because we're already working on this thing, I think. So what comes next? Well, I think a whole bunch more research. We're going to do a whole bunch more research. And, uh, well, that's basically it for now. After Alexander died, I was looking for a new counselor, and this guy is it. Rashmit Rabani. He has been transiting to one of the servants' habs, and he's been having some fun. This guy is a commando. He is an undercover trained operative, which means he can roam around other stations as he sees fit. And those operations are going to make him, well, let's say not very popular. Because I just destroyed slash sabotaged the spaceship, or sorry, the shipyard on Changong Station in control of the servants. Now I can control this guy and I can say, you know what, we're gonna blow something else up. In this case, I think the construction module is a really fair target because it means that constructing stuff on this station is gonna take longer. So we're gonna blow that up next. And um, if. If he is able to go and sabotage the power grid, maybe that makes the station an easier target for a hostile takeover using uh, my marine ship, which sadly still under construction. It's going to take another 135 days, but hey, we might have that station ready for the taking by the time that he's ready to go. After a while, Romania has been conquered. Because I refuse to go to war with the European Union. I mean, they would roll right over me. They conquered Romania. This is pretty shitty because getting this back is going to be extremely difficult. And the European Union already had a claim on it. So Romania is instantly integrated into the greater European Union. And this is starting to get out of hand. These guys still have... Um, I'm going to call them Tier 4 or even Tier 4.5... Information age weapons makes them far more powerful than mine. Um, I'm still only at the atomic age, and it just, I don't know. It's moved by 0012 in the last 30 days, and that is with my priorities mostly on army. I'm spending 24% of all the money on the military to try and get the military to upgrade, but this goes so slowly. Because completing this once, once is going to get you 00118. So basically 001 points of movement. It is so low. It is absolutely stunning how you're going to try and get the Eurasian Union into the information age. Because you can keep pouring money into it, but it's just not going to budge. So I guess that I'm either going to be forced to use more armies with this particular nation. Or I'm going to have to rely on China, which does have information age technology. And it is increasing at an even slower pace. But that's because I'm essentially not spending any money. The only factions that are spending money on that are the initiative. I have decided that I want more mission control. I want a bit of boost. I want some funding. These are the priorities that I have set. By the way, I don't need boost, strictly speaking. Um, the problem that China kind of has is that it has no claims. Well, I mean, it has a claim on Taipei, which I have completed. I do have a claim over here. 
on one region of India. India is completely controlled by the resistance and is allied with quite a few factions. So trying to get in there is going to be very, very difficult. The Greater Nations project is almost complete. That's good news. So we will be able to get some more claims. But as the world progresses, as the, the years progress, the world gets more and more carved up into factions, if you will. It gets harder and harder to try and isolate one particular nation and go, yes, I'm going to integrate that into the rest of my group. Because basically everything has already been carved up and either has a claim to it or is being attacked. The exception, of course, being the US. But the US is firmly in the hands of the initiative and they use it as a battering ram. They've been attacking left, right and center across the, sorry, across the whole planet. Um, they've been doing a lot of work. When it comes to the servants, surprise, surprise. Where you can find servants, you can also find alien activity, alien life forms. These fuckers have just been trying to take over as much territory as possible and then open the doors to the aliens. And there is nothing that I can do about it. I mean, yes, sure, I can go to war with Colombia and I can try and take Colombia down. I can try and take Brazil down. But I don't think that either the aliens or the servants are going to take that lying down. These guys fortunately don't have nukes. So if worst comes to worst, I can always nuke somebody. But I would rather not. So instead, what I've been focusing on is the fleet combatants research. And in a few months, we'll be able to build the actual battleship. I just don't think that I actually have the capacities to use them. Because my technology is probably not going to be good enough to get one of those battleships to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the enemy. I mean, even if I do, I'm not sure if I can actually build one. Because they're probably going to be prohibitively expensive. So um, right now... I'm just waiting so I can integrate the countries that I do have control over. And my list of nations is limited to just four. That is it. That's all that I have. Um, so, yeah, I'm not really sure what else there is to do for me right now. After a lot of research, we have also gained the mission to Jupiter. So we can now start going there and seeing what else is interesting around Jupiter. Allow sending probes to Jupiter in construction of habitats on and around its moons. So, take me to the research and let's see what else the plan has selected. Molten core fission systems, fine. Great Nations on December. Uh, the fleet combatants in December. Lots of things happening in December 2030. Okay, let's jump to the solar system. What is good around Jupiter? Well... Alien bases are good around Jupiter because about around the Leda moon of Jupiter we have contact. The Cloud Serpent Station, to be exact. And it looks to be a fairly sizable station with layered defenses, fusion reactors. Um, this is just... It's react... Oh, this is also an alien spaceworks. It's where they construct their stuff. It's like it's nothing but lasers and <laughs> fusion farms to make sure it fires. That is positively scary. So, yeah, trying to get into Jupiter? No joy. Let's see, this is a whole bunch of alien stuff around the inner asteroids. Um, this is just Jupiter, though. But Jupiter comes with a lot of moons. So, let's see what Jupiter itself has to offer. What can these moons provide me? There's 16 bases around the potential... Or 16 potential slots for bases around Callisto. <sighs> this is tricky. If I try and set up a base on Callisto, eventually... I'm going to be able to strike the aliens from within their own... What do you call that? Planisphere? Like, very close to the planet. I'll be able to build ships here, build up a base, but of course they're not going to take that lying down, because I'm doing it in ba their backyard. Around Leda, or, well, close to Leda. How long is this going to take? 1900 days. Sweet Jesus. Sorry, 1100 days. That is going to take a while. So this... <laughs> 
<laughs> Jesus, that's over three years. It's going to take a while before we get to Jupiter. Um, and interestingly, oh, sorry, and that's just Callisto. Let's just survey everything here because it's basically dirt cheap. It's like half, half a boost. No, it's not even any boost. Oh, it's twelve. <laughs> it's twelve hundred days now. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, survey Ganymede as well, please. Thank you. Bloody hell, dude. Alara is an asteroid. 1200 days. When you launch a probe is definitely important. Um, the best launch window would reduce it by a bunch, by 20%. Hmm. That means I need to wait another three months or so. But if I can take down 20%, eh, it might be worth it. What else can we go to? Because now we can go to Jupiter. Mm. Does that mean we can also get to these? No, not yet. There's also here 617 Patrocles. Patroclus. They have another base there. Looks like they got more than just the one base. It looks like their ship's docked here. Yeah. There's Victor 46. In 127 kilometer altitude, there is another ship. Great. The Stone Guardian, a Vorpal Fury class destroyer with 428 firepower. Dude. 428? How am I supposed to get up to those levels? <laughs> if ever. I mean, it looks like those numbers are unassailable at the moment. Even the ones around Earth at 381, and this just happens to be two ships. Um, they do have some more around Earth. That's Changong Station or whatever's left of it. Wait, you guys got another station now? Huh. Okay. Victor 57, 263. It's still a ton. It is still a ton. Now, I am researching the fleet combatants, which will give me firepower, and I have been receiving a ton of projects that I can take on. River Jack missiles, Rattler missiles, uh, urban warfare doctrines for the planet. We got Viper missiles, long range missiles carrying a frag warhead. Um, I think it's going to depend very much on what target you're taking on to see what sort of weaponry you need. Let's see if we could philosophize about Victor 57. We know it has a heatsink, okay. We know it has hull weapons, okay. Do we know what kind of armor it has? Exotic alien armor. Bonus resistance to laser damage. Okay, that's the nose. Um, yeah, it's just alien armor all around. This guy also comes with a point defense as well as its own missile launcher that comes with a range of a thousand kilometers. Oh, that's fun. Great. How are you supposed to take these fuckers down? Let's complete the research and see how powerful my battleship would be if I can finally build one of those. Okay, here we are. Fleet combatants. Cruiser, battlecruiser, battleship. These are big boy ships. The battleship goes to 1200 points, sorry, 1200 tons of ship. It's gonna take 80 metals. Now, that's not a problem, I have 2300. Um, what other research projects could we use to bolster our battleship firepower? Artemis torpedoes with a range of a thousand kilometers might be good, but at the same time the aliens seem to have no problem defending against missiles. Torpedo could be a heavier missile, so it might have some hull points of its own. It might not, I'm not sure. Anaconda, small anti-ship missile battery, um, does it say how much, how fast these things are? 5Gs. I suppose the torpedo is slower. Yeah, torpedo is 2.5Gs. So the torpedo is not as fast. Whatever, we're going to research the torpedo. More interestingly, let's have a look at the battleship. Design a ship class. A battleship. Good lord, that's a chonker. <clears throat> okay. No, we're not going to auto-design. So I have hull points, hard points. I don't have a lot of weapons that I can put on them yet. 
but let's go with a couple of 30mm autocannons to defend against enemy missiles. I would probably go with the Kreid Missile Bay, but the Kreid Missiles might not do enough damage. So this is probably what I would upgrade to Torpedo Base later. On the nose, we have the guns, which are either 10s or a 12-inch gun. If you go with a 12-inch, you're immediately set. These things deal more damage. They don't have more range. The magazine is smaller. The heaviest classical gun system we believe we can adapt for use in space. Suitable for a nose mount on our larger craft. Uses two hard points. It is a hell of a gun. And this is a battleship, so let's give it a hell of a gun. Okay, then we get a couple of core modules. Um, let's go with the Kreitz. Kreitz? I'm not sure how you should put these. You also got the 6 mils, or sorry, the 6 inch guns. For usage um, as guardian or defense. These are definitely defense. They're just there to shoot down missiles. I think we're going to use more Kreitz. <clears throat> just long range battleship. When it comes to utility modules, I think a couple of ECMs. You can only have one? Oh, okay, fine. It'd be like that. Would I like Marines on this ship? Probably not. I don't think I need that. An ISRU? Hmm. Yeah, it would mean I can refuel this ship wherever I want. Let's auto-design the rest of it. Okay, so you're going to get a magazine, you're going to get an ECM, you're going to get water hit si uh, heat water sink, a 6-inch, a 30 mil. Why a 6-inch? I personally would prefer another 30 mil just to keep the ship safe. And for balancing slash aesthetics, i probably put one on either side. Like that. You do bring marines, interestingly. You get your titanium array, you get a salt water battery, you get a solid fission reactor uh, 2, and a load of propellant tanks. <laughs> okay, so this little baby is going to cost me 819 water, 319 fissiles, no, volatiles. Um, I can actually build this. I can actually build this. Is this a good ship? I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. Considering what it can do, I'd say if we keep the bow pointed at the enemy, um, then let's do that. So add more composite armor on the bow and try to make this thing as difficult to kill as possible because it is a massive investment. Now, in keeping tradition, this is the Sontag class battleship. They're named after the highest tier of Patreon supporter that I have. A um, <clears throat> bit more lateral, a bit more on the composite, on the tail. Throw on some more propellant tanks. I don't know if this is a good ship. Here we go. Get me one of those. How many hull points, or sorry, not hull points. How many control points does it take me to build one of those? Ship construction. I can't see that, really? It's, this is not a defense bomber. You can tell me a lot of things, but this is not a defense bomber. Add to queue. Okay, let's go back to design ship class. No, I need to refit the ship class. Upgrade it. Uh, here. Gonna take me three controls. That's easy. I don't have that many, but by the time that the battleship's complete, I might have that many. So, progress. But defense bomber? <laughs> yeah, right. You still consider this battleship to be a defense bomber? Right. No, yeah, okay. I'd say it's space superiority or standoff, but it still considers it a defense bomber. Plus, because, yeah, maybe because of all the missiles that I have. Right, we're going to build one of those, and eventually we're going to see if that's anything that's going to be useful. And of course, in the meanwhile, I'm going to be trying to research as many additional weapon systems as I can to try and get this thing to be as strong as possible. It's the last part of the episode. 
Let's continue with the research and see what great nations can bring. Because I am very interested to see if I can then start to unify more and more and more of Eurasia. Here we go. It's going to allow for all sorts of projects, including forward Russia. It's going to take me a while before we actually get there. Um, so I might have that project pop up at some point. I don't exactly know when. That's kind of the problem. Let's merge Hungary. And there we go. That's one less country for me to worry about. And this way, I don't have to personally worry about Hungary. As it's now part of the Eurasian Union. And I would, I would again, I'd love to bring Romania back or whatever Romania has become now. But it's a little difficult. At some point, I feel we're going to have to take on the guys in Europe anyway. It's not going to be pretty. Uh, it's going to cost a lot of my armies. I currently have five. They also have five, but they're all over the place. They got one in Tel Aviv. They also have one... Uh, sorry, they got two in Tel Aviv. They got one in Madrid, one in Lyon, and one in Berlin. Okay, so they're pretty scattered. It's going to take them a while to get around. And I doubt that I can easily and quickly take over. But, well, maybe I can sneak some country away like Sweden or uh, what used to be Finland before they come back and kill me. Anyway, lots more to come in a future episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon for more.